some systems can be modeled at discrete times after one week, two week, etc. Not at the times in between. Think for example of our lines and zebras. If there are say 37 lines at week two and 38 lines at week three, then it does not make much sense to interpolate and to look at week 2.5 and have say 37.5 lines. A discrete model works already quite well here. Other systems, on the other hand, vary say more continuous in time. Think about a chemical reaction. The quantities of the reacting components are varying continuously in time. Maybe not on the level of single molecules, but certainly at the level on which we observe these quantities. Huge amounts of molecules. Another example is the change uh, uh, and current through some electrical circuit. Both current and potential will vary continuously in time. In order to model this type of processes, we often use differential equations. In this video, we will introduce the general idea. And in order to do so, we use a very well-known example, maybe you've seen already it already too often, the case of a mass attached to a spring. And we want to model the behavior of this mass. You may have seen it already in mechanics or maybe in calculus, it's used very often, but well, it's convenient to introduce a general idea using this example. So we know the total uh, force on the mass will generate acceleration, f total equals m times a, and in this case the total force equals the spring force plus the frictional force. It's on the, in the horizontal plane, so there's no force of gravity present in the x direction. So the spring force is modeled using Hooke law, very often works quite well, minus k times x. For the frictional force, yeah, yeah, I know, we should use uh, mu times the uh, fz, the, the normal force, that would be the, say, normal frictional force. It's the best way to model it. However, that doesn't give us much, uh, much more, it, it won't change the problem, it just changes the equilibrium position of the mass a bit. So it's not that interesting to use uh, that uh, frictional force. It becomes a bit more interesting if we model the frictional force as minus c times v, where c is some friction coefficient and v the velocity. It's basically if, if you would uh, <coughs> be going through a very sticky medium and this c becomes more important. What does that give us for our system? Well, we have dx dt, the derivative of position with respect to time, equals velocity v. dv dt equals a acceleration. We know a equals minus k over m times x minus c over m times v. So we have a system of two linear differential equations. And we all always need to give some initial condition say at t equals zero, we add a r to specified place x zero and have a specified velocity v zero. But as we will see later on, this initial condition doesn't really matter that much. Coefficients over here are important. Then we can rewrite the system a bit as follows. We set x1 equals x and x2 equals v and we put x1 and x2 in a factor x. Then the factor x at t equals zero equals x0, v0, initial condition. And for the derivative, x1 prime, x2 prime, we get the matrix times x1 and x2. And what do we have in the matrix? We have dx1 dt equals v, so dx1 dt equals 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2, because x2 equals v. And for the second row, we get dx2 dt, or dv dt, we get minus k over m times x1, 
minus c over m times x2. We are not going to solve this problem just yet, we'll just look at the general form first. So, what do we see? The problem is of the following form. We have a x prime equals matrix times x, x prime equals matrix times x, with some prescribed initial condition. The vector x, so the vectors here, contain information about the state, tells in which state the system is at a specific time. The matrix A tells us how the system will evolve. The matrix A over here will tell us about the dynamics of the system. So here we have an example of a dynamical system of the form x prime equals a times x. Vector describes the situation, matrix A the dynamics. Now there's one important concept which we can immediately discuss. That's the difference between coupled and decoupled systems. We use two examples to uh, look at the difference. Suppose we take a diagonal matrix for A, that's possible of course, A can be any matrix. Then the system looks x1 prime equals 2 times x1 and x2 prime equals 3 times x2. But that means that x1 and x2 have nothing to do with each other. You can solve them separately. In such a case, we call the system decoupled. Decoupled in two components. So in that case, you would actually not have a coupled system of equ equations. You can solve them one by one. However, if you put a bit more rubbish in the matrix A over here, so you have some general matrix A, and if you write down the components then, we have x1 prime equals 2 times x1 plus x2. So now x1 prime and x2 influence each other. Same for x2 prime and x1. In such a case, the system of differential equations is called coupled. This problem, a decoupled problem, is of course usually much easier to solve than a coupled problem like this one. Next videos we will see how we can solve such a coupled system in general.